Last month, I released these two videos right here to show you how Magnus himself uses the Wing Gambit to defeat Super GMs and other higher rated players. In one of these videos, I even mentioned something to say, your opponents will not always accept the Wing Gambit. Sometimes they can also decline it. But from there, you can still find your way and have a good game. Which is why today I want to entertain you and show you how you can punish a higher rated player using the wing gambit. So without wasting much of your time or putting you to sleep, let me challenge a random chess player on Lee Chess and show you one of the ways in which the game can go. Okay, so here we have a game playing against a 2300 rated chess player. So let's go pawn to e4, pawn to e4, okay. Oh, time for the wing gambit. <laughs> time to play the wing gambit. Pawn to b4. If c takes on b4, I'll go a3. Oh, oh, okay. My opponent has declined the wing gambit. Let me go pawn to b5. Pawn to b5. Okay. I'm not saying that's the perfect way. That's the best way of playing the wing gambit. But I'm just... I'm just playing the moves. I'm just playing chess here. No theory. So pawn to d5 by black. I go f3. If he takes, I'll take with my f3 pawn. Pawn to e5 by black. What am I going to do? Knight. Let me go knight c3 inviting pawn to d4. Okay, let's say. So I'm going to play knight e2 with an intention of putting my knight on the g3 square. Bishop d3 by black. What am I going to do? Can I break that center? With Can I or maybe I play bishop bishop d2? Yes, bishop d2 plan is to go h plan is plan is to go f4 next. Knight g3 is coming. Knight g3 knight f4. Oh, maybe I can take advantage of the pin. I can oh what am I going to do here so this started as a wing gambit now I want to show you how to play if things don't go your way so let's go f4 so I'm just playing chess here no theory can I take with my knight or the bishop bishop takes on f4 attacking the bishop bishop takes knight takes if knight g6 I have knight h3 I have and pawn g3 bishop Fienkero, knight h3 first, supporting my other knight on f4, I think. I have queen g4 again. g3, can I play g3? g3, yes, supporting my two knights. If f5 by black, what am I going to do? I think he cannot even play f5 because that would just weaken his king side. I will take the knight on g6 and if he takes with his h pawn anyways so pawn to g3 now we fiancero our bishop let me fiancero my bishop what is this knight doing here let me fiancero my bishop on g2 guarding my e pawn now i castle shot so you guys can see my wing gambit was declined but i didn't stop playing and it seems and it seems I'm playing well. Like I have a good position here. I'm happy with what I have. Okay, so queen h5, maybe. Because I want to put my queen on the most active square. Queen h5, yes. Plan is to go knight g5. Threatening to checkmate on h7, which is not going to happen, I know. <laughs> so, uh, can I play pawn to a4? If a takes okay, I take on b5. If rook takes on a1, I'll take with my other rook. Okay, so I'm just playing chess here. No theories, no cheating, no use of an engine. Knight g5, inviting pawn to a6 so that I can put my knight on the f3 square. Now if knight g takes on f4, I'll take with my pawn. Not much of a stretch. Let me take with my bishop. 
bishop takes the knight on f3 knight takes pawn takes so if rook takes again i have oh, okay so this is where i need to pause a little bit and do the need for can i take on a8 with my rook or maybe i play rook a e1 plan is to go to the e2 square and put my rook on g2 and start moving my pawn my f pawn up to the f6 square so let's go rook e2 plan is to go onto the g2 square taking advantage of the g file if black queen goes to f4 i'll go rook g2 rook g2 and if black's rook takes on c2 if rook takes on c2 i'll go rook g3 one step up maintaining the pressure rook g3 still putting pressure along the g file i can take on h3 i can push my f pawn up to the f6 so this this was the wing gambit guys so f5 f6 is coming see how black doesn't have time to push his b pawns to push his b pawn i have king h1 rook g1 doubling up my rooks along the g file eyeing the g7 square oh this is just too much <laughs> i have so many things in my mind okay f6 by black what is that i think i can just take on h h6 right with my queen can i just take yes queen takes on h6 yes there's nothing i can do i have the bishop if rook f7 i have bishop h5 eyeing the f7 square oh this is beautiful so this is the wing gambit guys should start playing the wing gambit <laughs> uh, okay rook f7 bishop h5 attacking the rook so black gives up the rook let me take the rook the free rook on f7 queen takes on f7 okay so king h1 plan is to go rook fg1 doubling up my rooks king f8 wow <laughs> so let's go queen h8 check oh now black's queen is gone okay rook takes on g7 and black resigns a23 46 rated chess player so i just won a game which is awesome i won a game with a wing gambit so rook g7 pins black's queen to the king okay rook g7 pins black's queen to the king and there's nothing that black can do about it rook g1 is coming and that's how i won this game anyways so let me show you what i was expecting yes i covered this in my previous video on the wing gambit now for those of you who didn't watch uh the that that video on the wing gambit uh this is what i was recommending okay so let me show you what i was expecting so after playing uh, pawn e4 c5 i always go b5 to play the wing gambit yeah sometimes if uh black plays pawn to b6 you just need to take the pawn on c4 but i just went to the b5 square deliberately to try out something new so now let me show you what i was expecting uh one of the lines that i covered in my previous video on the wing gambit so after e4 black plays pawn to c5 which is the sicilian defense and then we play b4 normally black takes uh on b4 and then they also take on a3 after which we take with the bishop the idea is to uh you know control the whole of this diagonal the the highlighted diagonal up to the f8 square so for example if i turn on the leeches database here 
here are the most uh, common moves the most played moves in this position black can play knight c6 for example after which you should go d4 so you just want to strengthen your center okay with moves such as pawn to c3 and e5 so if e6 just take black's bishop on f8 and black has no option but to take back okay with the king and that's how black loses his right to castle very early in the opening stage look how badly placed uh black's pieces are right now the king the rook on h8 and the knight cannot develop classically um because i have pawn e5 so i also have a move pawn to c3 okay i have a move i can play d5 yes and uh, for the knight and the e6 pawn but even better is to play pawn to c3 after which i'll start thinking of how to castle short so this is a very good position for white and uh, you guys can give it a try and you guys can give it a try i guarantee you that you're going to win many games with this one so point to c3 for example if i play point to c3 uh, my aim is just to strengthen my center look how beautifully placed my uh, pawns are on the center very solid next i'm also planning to go point to e5 if uh, let's say uh black plays passively so in this position black may play something like pawn to d5 after which i go e5 look at how uh solid my center pawns are if let's say black plays knight g d7 which is the top played move in this position here i have plenty options for example i can go bishop d3 covering the whole of this diagonal which i have highlighted plus i have the moves that i'm highlighting right now knight to f3 g3 h4 etc etc so black can respond with uh, g6 that's what they play most of the times in this position after which i have two options I can either go pawn to f4 right away or let's say knight to e2 uh, supporting the pawn on f4 and sometimes i like uh, putting my knight on f3 i ha i also have uh, h4 which i like playing so h4 i'm intending to go h5 next and mess up black's pawn structure now after h4 black will copy you and um, push the pawn to h5 which is somehow a blunder because i have knight f3 and knight g5 my knight will be very great at uh, that square so that is a very great outpost for my king's knight so when you whenever you see black playing uh knight uh, knight d f5 it's high time you take that knight because the knight on f5 black's knight on f5 is a beast it's the most active uh, it's the most active piece that black has so just take it and um, black uh, won't take with the deep pawn most of the times they will take with the g pawn because they don't want to weaken their center so in this case so in this black cannot even play pawn to f6 here because we are just going to take the pawn and we play pawn to f4 so instead you will see black doing something else for example for example here black may play uh pawn to s6 something like pawn to s6 and then later on they are planning to play pawn to b5 but here we just castle anyways castling is the best way to go for example if we castle black can think of playing pawn to s6 now we just develop our knight onto the a3 square intending to go on b5 not and uh, later on put our knight on d6 so black cannot play uh pawn to g5 black cannot play pawn to b5 because we can take that pawn since the uh blacks since black's rook on a8 is pinned and anyways that's what happens because let's say if uh, black plays what can he even play in this position i don't know if black plays uh point to b b6 intending to develop his light squared bishop we just call knight b5 the, the black pawn cannot take our knight because the rook on a8 is pinned we are intending to 
put our knight onto the d6 outpost again so where can the black bishop even go from here i don't know maybe let's say rook f8 we're still going to go uh knight d6 attacking the f7 weak pawn oh not to mention that uh the rook was guarding the h5 pawn now that it is no longer there the the the, the h5 pawn is going to fall so the rook has to guard the h5 pawn constantly so we are going to play after bishop d7 we we play knight d6 now again look how you know passive black pieces look like black pieces are all on the back rank and please note that black's b pawn is not going anywhere because of our c pawn and the a pawn is overwhelmed by our major pieces including the queen.